Okay, good evening everybody and a warm welcome to those attending the Major Applications Planning Committee and to our viewers watching live on the Council's YouTube channel, Hillingdon London. My name is Councillor Steve Tuckwell and I am the Chairman of this evening's meeting. Details of the business to be considered today are shown on the agenda, copies of which are accessible online underneath the live broadcast. For those present in the room and intending to speak, please note that you will be filmed and any statements you make will be recorded and made public. A reminder to anyone speaking today that your voice will only be audible online if the microphone is switched on. In terms of a fire alarm, we are not expecting a fire drill this evening, so if the alarm does go off, please follow officers to the fire exits and out of the building to the designated meeting points. For mobile tablets and devices, for those in the room, please switch off any mobile devices before the meeting starts or put them onto silent. Please note that councillors and officers of the committee may be using their laptops or tablets during the meeting to view the agenda paperwork. In terms of meeting feedback, those attending in the public gallery, we haven't got any this evening at the moment, uh, but there are some feedback forms available for you to complete and for those watching online there is a link to the feedback directly underneath the broadcast. Feedback at these meetings enables officers to look at ways in which these meetings can be improved. Okay, that's some of the Chairman's announcements. I'm now going to introduce um, councillors and officers this evening. So I'll start with, we've got our councillor Higgins, who's our Vice Chairman. Good evening. We have councillor Duncan, the Opposition Lead. Good evening. We have councillor Chapman, we have councillor Cawthorn, councillor Morse and councillor Yarrow. So good evening to our voting members this evening. We're also joined by officers who support proceedings and we have Director, uh, Deputy Director of Planning and Regeneration, James Roger. We have Strategic and Major Planning Officer this evening, Mandit Maholtra. We have our Transport Planning Officer, Alan Tilley. Our Legal Advisor this evening is Glenn Egan. And the person who brings us all together to make this meeting work is our Democratic Services Officer, Steve Clark. So that's the introductions. We can now get into the main body of the agenda this evening and we'll start with agenda item one this evening. Steve, apologies for absence. Apologies have been received from Councillor Mathers with Councillor Morse substituting. Okay, and thank you to Councillor Morse for substituting this evening and welcome. Agenda item two, declarations of interest in matters before this meeting this evening. Any declarations of interest? Okay, not seeing any indications there, so we can move on to agenda item three, is to receive and agree the minutes of our last meeting, which was the 19th of January. Can I take those as agreed? Okay, we can record that, Steve, as, as agreed. Agenda item four this evening is matters notified in advance or urgent, which we don't have any. And agenda item five is to confirm public and private reports this evening. All items this evening will be in part one. There are no part two or private items. And I can confirm that agenda item six this evening has been withdrawn. And we will be taking agenda items seven, eight and nine in the order that's published on the agenda. And neither of those or none of those are petition items this evening. Okay. That brings us to the main part of the meeting. As we just heard, agenda item six has been withdrawn, so we can move swiftly on to agenda item seven, which is units six and seven, Silverdale Industrial State. Over to you, Mandip. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, members. Item seven relates to unit six and seven at the Silverdale Industrial Estate in Hayes. The application site is outlined here in red. I will, this, red area only shows the application site buildings. The next plan, or a few plans along, will show you the, the wider site. So the application site is located within what was the former IVA, so strategic industrial land, land which is designated primarily for industrial uses and intensification of such uses is promoted through the plan. The Silverdale Industrial Estate um, sign on this plan is shaded in brown. That is actually a, locally, a statutory listed building, so Benlo Works, which is allocated in our local plan. If we move ahead, this is the existing site plan. So as I mentioned, the red line that you noted on the plan before you was the actual buildings themselves. However, the car park serving these buildings is located across the private estate road. So there is an existing plan which shows the units and then the area of car parking which serves the facility across the estate road. The application before us is for the proposed change of use of the existing buildings to provide a mixed sewer generous use which comprises of van sales, external display, repair workshops, MOT facilities, part storage, a distribution centre. It's a multitude of uses but they are all very much um, 
industrial in their nature. And for that reason, there is no objection to the principal change of use to these, um, to these uses. The Council's policy officer has also supported that position. Now, this shows more clearly that the buildings are located towards the southern end of the site. This is the Grand Union Canal for context. And then the parking is across the estate road, and the estate road leads in a U-shape all the way out to the main Silverdale Road. If we take you through the existing ground and first floor plans, the proposed site plan where it shows some of the multifunctional uses, some amendments to the yard, and also some works to secure, to provide secure fencing around the site. This is the proposed first floor plan, which does include a very marginal increase in floor area for ancillary uses. This is the ground floor and the front elevation. So there are some additional um, punch, punches into the front elevation to allow for access and facilitating the MOT services. These are the existing elevations, and there you can see some of those uh, punches that I was referring to, so the changes to the external facades. We then have a proposed a car wash facility will be a covered and enclosed uh, facility. I'll take you through some site plans. So this is the existing site, Unit 6 and 7, as shown on the plan. And this is the, list, the statutory listed Benlow work. So the car parking associated with the application site is all in front of that substantial wall that you can see in the foreground with the building behind it. The application site is located very close to the Royal Mail Depot. So you can see the beginning of the Royal Mail Depot building here. Uh, but on plan, it's actually a, a different part of the application uh, of the industrial estate. The application has been recommended for approval. There have been substantial negotiations when it comes to car parking. So you'll note that there is an addendum on this item, which seeks to add a condition just to prevent any additional floor area now, one of the things that we um, had m substantive conversations about was the extent of car parking and whether it was suitable to facilitate um, the size of the building. So the, the condition is necessary in order to avoid an incremental increase in car parking and therefore highway safety. I'd also like to add, and I apologize that this isn't in your ad published addendum, but a verbal update. We did have an objection from local residents about the potential for petrol and oil concerns. So we are proposing to add an informative. Uh, now we're obviously giving a fairly mixed use and it's for the applicant to determine whether they require something called an oil interceptor or separator. So the informative will advise them that they need to contact the environment agency to understand whether the premises that they um, are proposing to use the building for or the operations require them to have such an oil interceptor and receptor. So that is in order to address the concerns raised by a local resident. In all other respects, the application is recommended for approval subject to planning obligations for air quality, to secure a travel plan, and also all the conditions listed in your officer report. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Mandit. We have no speakers here this evening, um, so we can go straight into the debate. But before we do that, I think it's just worth reminding members there is an update in the addendum and we've just heard a, a verbal um, addition to add an informative. So members need to consider those points as well. So, Councillor Higgins. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't really have a problem with this. The only thing I do quite just, I mean, it was raised just now, the, the informative, I wish that was a bit stronger as a con more of a condition. And also uh, water suds as well. Being so near the canal, I want that to make sure that it's it's not very clear in the report, so I just wanted that tightened up. I don't know if officers can comment on that. Apart from that, I would propose it. Thank you. If you can come back with that one, James. Yeah, so, yep. um, so we looked at uh, Iron Mandate, we looked at the Environment Agency website, and it wasn't completely clear that they would or wouldn't need a petrol interceptor. Uh, so what, became, what was clear to us is that they'd need to speak to the Environment Agency. So that's why we're going for an informative, because the problem we have it, 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 it is they really need to speak to the Environment Agency, and if we try and impose a particular solution on them, um, that may not be, be the, the right approach when we think that they need to speak to the Environment Agency, basically, which is what the informative would give them details to do, and um, it, you know, give them contact details and advice on, on that particular issue. Yeah, but through you, Chairman, uh, uh, what about the water, though? 
if they're using car washing, there's soap, suds and stuff to canal behind, you know, we want to make sure that that's not being polluted and, and that's run off there. And, you know, if it's, if you're going to do the informative for that, then can we put, make sure that we also ask for the informative for the water dis used, well, I don't know, is it grey water or whatever? I don't know, maybe they can use a grey water system that make the reuse the water. I don't know what the situation is, but something like that might be quite helpful. Yeah, uh, uh, you'll probably notice my colleague is nodding her head, but yes, I think we can we can add a. Um, if you're happy to delegate to, yeah. to me, we'll. Um, I think we're looking to just uh, strengthen that informative to include okay. the possible impact in the canal. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly what we're saying on that one. Okay, you okay with that, Councillor Higgins? Okay, right. Move the debate on. We've got uh, Councillor Cawthorn, followed by Councillor Duncan. Thank you. A couple of questions, uh, if I may. Um, the first one is, I'm, uh, I'm not sure I, perhaps it's just me, but I'm not sure that if I quite grasp the nature of the objection that was raised in the brief verbal update. I wonder if I can just have that again in a little bit more detail. Uh, that's my first point. Second question is, there's, I mean, uh, like Councillor Higgins, I haven't got a particular issue with the application, but this is clearly a departure from policy. And I'm always a little bit nervous about that in terms of justification so we don't uh, unwittingly undermine our policy framework. So my question really is around the, uh, the evidence uh, uh, supplied to uh, justify this departure from policy and uh, how robust uh, we are in making sure that uh, that's as solid as it needs to be. So that, they're my two points. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Cawthorn. And if you're okay to put those points up, so it's clarification on the verbal update and uh, possible departure from policy, so up to you. Thank you, Councillor Tuckwell. Councillor Cawthorn, on page 122, I apologise for having rushed through it, one of the objections listed from local residents raised a concern which specifically said parking will be a problem as food suppliers currently get, uh, we get around 40 a month, and then it goes on to talk, sorry, num point number one at the very top of page 122 says, the MOT centre will result in the smell of petrol, diesel and repair during testing which would be detrimental to the adjoining food supply business. So the need for the petrol and oil interceptor is preventative um, and it was a concern that's raised which is valid in environmental terms but less so in planning, hence the reason that we've, opposed, we've proposed an informative to ask them to contact the environment agency. That then leads to the issues with regard to wastewater from a site that potentially has petrol or, um, or diesel remnants in its supply. So the need for the additional text in relation to what happens to the water from the car wash, which is part of the proposal. So they were very valid points by Councillor Higgins, and I think they should go on as informatives to support the planning application. Um, in terms of the policy justification, the policy officer was initially concerned that the use of this site does not fall into the B2 um, or B8 bubble, which is considered to be acceptable within strategic industrial land. The reason it doesn't fall into those uses is because it's such a huge multitude of uses. It's an MOT center, it does some sales, it does some rental. Um, and for that reason, we've badged it as a sewer use because it has no primary function but the, 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 the sum of the parts, when you add up all of those smaller functions within it, are compatible with B2, B8 uses. Um, so we are confident that it's not a direct conflict with planning policy um, in terms of its land use and its function. Thank you. Thank you. You okay with that, Councillor? I, I am indeed, thank yeah. you. I think there's another point that was raised there around emissions from neighbouring businesses. There is quite a, a strong condition, Condition 9, which looks at emissions and stipulates the, um, the use of cleaner vehicles, Euro 6 engines in particular, so that, that should also help that as well. Okay, right, um, I've got Councillor Duncan, Councillor Chapman and Councillor Moore, so we'll take them in that order. Councillor Duncan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just uh, a bit concerned about the parking because it says that it's got a low PTAL. There are going to be 37 members of staff um, employed here. I know that it says because of shift working, there won't be um, more than 22 on the, the site at any one time. But presumably, if you work in the car business, you like cars and you're going to be arriving by car. 
And um, so it says it's increased to 18 car parking spaces. Are these the one across the road? I'm, I'm I, think, I think it actually shows 19, if you don't mind checking. If, if uh, I just looked at it quickly. Um, it looked like 19 in the layout, in the plans we've got here. But um, at least that's, that's one more. And also, this travel bond, um, travel plan and £20,000 travel plan bond, is that's to encourage people to arrive by public transport, isn't it? I was actually going to give that as an answer. That, <laughs> that, yeah, that, so, yes, yeah, so the heads of terms are the air quality contribution, but also, importantly, that they have to do a travel plan. Yeah, uh, but what if people don't? I mean, if I worked in a, you know, a place dealing with cars, I think I would be, you know, interested in cars. I'd have my own car, I'd have ride by car, particularly if it doesn't have um, that good a P-tail score, that it's, it's, you know, that accessible. I mean, if it's right next door to a station or something, well, you don't bother. But um, when we say, I just wonder how effective these travel bonds are. We ask for them and we never really hear reports back about how successful they've been. And I have heard of perhaps fairly unscrupulous people who I hope are in a minority who take the money, but nothing much happens as a result. So maybe at some point we would, you know, it'd be useful to have some report back on how effective these are, or is this a policy that we're pursuing that isn't too effective? Yeah, that, that I think we'll capture the point that's being made there, and that might be something for a select committee to, to look yeah, at in terms of getting some of the numbers, I yeah. would have thought. But, uh, just to see. But, um, um, yeah, I just wondered about this parking. Okay. So we've now got nine, is it 19 spaces, I think? Can I do something slightly unusual? I, 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 Amanda's got a laptop. I'd like to check the PTEL because I can't understand how this is a PTEL zero because I know 200 metres away is PTEL four. Yeah, well, I think there's been a lot of questions about some of the PTEL schools, haven't there, over a period of time. But um, so we'll, we'll get that checked out for you. But I think it would be useful to check that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. So, can we just can we address the point around the amount of parking spaces that was raised? Yeah, Alan. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, when the planning application was initially received, there were only six staff car parking spaces, and uh, following a lot of negotiations and um, the applicant redesigning the layout, that was then increased to 18. Um, Councillor is correct to count 19, though I've always assumed because that, that one is outlined in orange, uh, it isn't in fact one of the 18 staff car parking spaces. So I'm confident to uh, record that there are 18 staff car parking spaces. Um, as with regard to the travel plan bond, the council takes £20,000 and holds the money. Uh, should the applicant not deliver the transport the travel plan themselves, the council can take that money and uh, appoint consultants to do the travel plan on behalf of the applicant. That's the, um, the reasoning behind the travel plan bond, the uh, security that they deliver the travel plan. Thank like you, Chairman. Like a deposit? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so it's 18 spaces. Councillor? I'm happy with okay. that. Thank you. Mandy, do you want to come back on anything on the PTEL? I can. The PTEL is something I have not seen before. So the car parking area, so all of the land to the north of this road is in PTEL 0. The building is in a PTEL 4. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that before. It's a, Here's my colour-coded map. I don't know if you can see that. It's um, So the grey being 0 and the yellow being four, so it's quite unusual. Um, so it's not inaccurately reported, it's just a bit confused. It's, it's one of those P-Tower anomalies. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure James and his team will, will get their head round at some point. Okay, anything else, Councillor Dunn? Does that address your points, yeah? No, that's all, okay, thank you. Thank Chair. you. Right, I've got Councillor Chapman followed by Councillor Morse. Thank you, Chairman. Actually, my point's been raised and discussed already, so I'm fine. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Councillor Morse? 
Uh, my question is, um, it talks about delivery of vehicles by trailer, not transporter. And when I look at condition seven, it, it talks about deliveries, but it's not very specific on this. And what the question I'm asking is, should we condition it that delivery can only be by trailer? Because obviously, uh, as a, <laughs> in that part of Hayes, it'd be better that it's delivered by trailer. Thank you, Councillor Morse. Can we look at condition seven and strengthen that in any way? I'm sure we can, but. Or oh, Alan, sorry. I, I have no objection to that uh, suggestion. Okay, so can we just pick, Councillor Morse, is there anything particular you'd like included in that, in your suggestion on condition seven? No? Councillor Morse? Should we? So I was, is there anything particular you had in mind when you said about strengthening condition seven? Uh, and all I'm suggesting is it, it, it's not explicit that we are doing that. It, it talks about time and deliveries, and I appreciate that, but I don't know, you know, all I'm saying is should we add a specific point about the trailers? Well, if you're happy, we can delegate that to officers I'm, to, I'm, to pick that if up. Yeah. If you can add that, I'm, I'm happy. Okay. All right, we'll come back to... I've got Councillor Duncan who's indicated first, and then we'll come back to Councillor Higgins. I, I was going to move the officer's recommendation. No. Oh, have you asked second? You're seconding, then? okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Councillor Higgins, you want to come back yeah, on that point? Yeah, I'm not really that happy about conditioning how vehicles are dropped off. I mean, because what if the car's broken down and it's put in one of those kazoo trailers that's in, all enclosed, so that won't be allowed to deliver it there? I, it's a bit, I don't know whether the legal says it's a bit. I think it might be a bit onerous on on the on the business. I would, have, I would could, feel a bit uncomfortable. Your, with that. your point is it could be a bit too restrictive for the operator. Yeah, so I, to, you know, I want to encourage business, and, and you know, if we don't get these sites used, they're going to end up with building housing. Yeah. So you know, it, and we're losing industrial units all over the place. So I don't, you know, I think we should be a little bit mindful of it. I mean, I don't. If there's some issues about pollution or the vehicles coming in that are old, old diesel things, that, that's, I understand yeah. that. But uh, whether it's a trailer or whether it's a flatbed or whatever, it's. Yeah. It's a, I, I, I just think I, you I, have I to know man, it's eager to come in, but I think there's a, there's a point there about is it a, a vehicle that's been presented to the garage for sale, yeah. which would come on a, on a, tra on a, on a low loader car transporter thing, or is it coming in on a breakdown vehicle, which is going to be a flatbed truck? You know, you're going to get a combination of both, aren't you? So, um, Andy, do you want to come in? I was going to say, Councillor Higgins, you've just mentioned that you would encourage it, and I think that's the terminology that would probably be used in the in the way in which we phrase the condition, rather than a mandatory requirement. Um, it would be encouraged that a delivery and service plan looked at the most um, efficient methods to minimise harm to the highway. Thank you. And I think James is suggesting an extra informative. I, I was just going to say, I think this may be better that uh, my preference would be to leave the condition, but to just have an informative that guides the applicant in terms of what we might be looking for in terms of the condition discharge. Um. Okay, thank you. Okay, good debate. Um, we are moved and we are seconded. Uh, just try and remind ourselves what we're moved and seconded on. Um, so <laughs> So we've got an additional condition that was in the addendum um, around the car parking. We've had a, a, um, a verbal update on an additional informative around interceptor provision, um, but we want to ensure that that informative is sufficient enough to encourage um, oils, detergents, and protection of the canal and the canal, yeah, and, and the water table in general. Um, and I think we we're also talking about an additional informative around uh, the servicing and encouraging people to, you know, do it in the most economic and environmentally friendly way possible. So I think I've got everything there. Yeah. So we're moved and seconded on those points. Can I have a show of hands, please? So 
Mr. Steve, that's unanimous, yeah? So, unanimous for officer's recommendation. Agenda item seven this evening is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, through you, Chairman, I, I, I've noticed that we have some members of the public. I just want to make sure they're not here for item six. Uh, yeah, item six. No? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. No, we were expecting some, some people here to, uh, to observe one of the other applications. Right, so. no. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, by the way. Welcome. Um, okay, right, agenda item eight. Um, we can move on to that. River House on Riverside Way. Mandit, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Agenda item eight is River House, uh, which is shown on the site location plan in red. Uh, it's accessed by a Riverside Way, uh, which is primarily serving the industrial estate, uh, which runs off Rockingham Road. If we progress, you can see that the application site is within, again, an in, uh, a strategic industrial um, location. So it's designated for industrial uses. The site does abut Greenbelt, and this is the borough boundary with Buckinghamshire over to the west. We take you through the site location plan and the drawings. Um, the application seeks the demolition of the existing building, so as shown here in yellow, um, and the construction of a new building for B2 and B8 uses. So the uses are fully policy compliant within the strategic industrial location. There will also be some ancillary office accommodation, but that is primarily to serve the B2 and B8 functions. There will be reconfigured car parking, an external yard, um, lighting and landscaping. So if I take you through the plans, this is the existing block plan with all buildings to be demolished. There are a few ancillary buildings that can be seen on the plan. It's ex the existing first floor. The existing elevation show it's a fairly low level building. Um, the proposed site layout indicates that there will be a I'd like to say a more efficiently laid out building so that the area of car parking is along the frontage. The yard um, runs along the eastern site, eastern part of the site, and the main building is located towards the rear. There is a new access proposed here. This one will be extinguished and that form forms part of the planning application heads of terms. If we go through the proposed site plan with external finishes, this shows the, um, the external finishes of the yard, car parking area and the service bay. These are the proposed offices, which are the ancillary element um, at located at first ground and first floor level. Proposed roof plan. We have PV panels located on the roof for energy efficiency. Proposed building plan seems very similar to the other plans I've just shown you. <laughs> These are the building sections to indicate the height of the building. Now, it is slightly taller than the existing building, but it's also a more efficient um, unit. So most of the current day warehouses require fairly tall floor to ceiling heights, whereas the existing building is probably not fit for those purposes. We have the external lighting layout, um, louvers, and then some of the front elevations. So there are docking bays to service the B2 and B8 uses. We have the landscape plan for the application site. So there has been a green wall proposed along this elevation, along the green belt, which has been welcomed. We also have landscaping around the perimeter of the site and where it has been possible. Um, we are in a strategic industrial location, so not one where um, there is generally a lot of landscaping, but uh, it has been encouraged where it can be facilitated within the application. These are the proposed elevations, so it's a fairly typical industrial building. Um, and these are the tree constraints plans. So we have an urban greening factor. If I take you through the planning application uh, site and site photographs, we have fairly typical, um, fairly old 1970s building. Now the application does have a addendum. The one thing I would note is that if we can all turn to page 145, even the addendum has, um, ha the addendum is being addended, yes. So on page 145, we are seeking to amend condition 3B by virtue of removing it. So there is a green wall proposed. So we want to remove the text under condition number five, which says justification as to why no part of the development can include a green roof because we don't want the justification. We would like the green wall that's proposed on one of the elevations. Uh, we will also be doing all else that's mentioned in the addendum. There is 
One, one verbal update in that we have missed pollution absorbing trees um, and that will be added to the landscaping conditions. Bless you, Councillor Duncan. Um, and we will also be adding a SUDS condition. So you'll note that there were, there has been dialogue about drainage on the site and there has been an increase in the size of the tank on the site, but it is a pumped solution. So we want to ensure that by virtue of adding a SUDS and drainage condition, we're seeking the long-term management and maintenance of the solutions that are proposed and also encouraging um, minimizing the water usage, so grey water harvesting. That has been missed from the current committee report, so that is proposed to be added. Um, the application has been recommended for approval as per the officer report, subject to all of the various planning conditions and then the obligations set out on page 142 and 143 of your committee report. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that, Mandip, uh, for taking us through. Um, again, no petition items, no speaking rights, but before we go to the debate, just a reminder that <coughs> we've got an addendum that adjusts condition five, and we've had a verbal update on pollution absorbing trees and an additional SUDS condition. So who wants to take that? Councillor Higgins, I think I saw your hand up there. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, case 145, um, landscaping. I, I see that you've got 2.F external lighting. Can, can, I, can officers expand what that is? Because I, I would do, I noticed that there's a lot of green area, so there's going to be a lot of wildlife there because there's probably no activity in the evening of this business, um, although I would like to know what the business is actually doing. Um, so I'd like the, the lighting that's outside to be uh, LED and you can get not very bright enough to deter seeing people around but obviously um, not to encourage bats to fly in it or whatever. So sorry. <laughs> sorry Councillor Tuckwell. Uh, Councillor Higgins there is an external lighting layout plan so we're we probably don't want to see the details. We can see from this plan that the light spill does not protrude into the green belt um, and is minimally um, over to the eastern side impacting on the River Colne. So we could actually remove part 2F uh, because we have the details here. And I apologize that we didn't pick up on deleting that sooner. Sorry, so so you coming, James? You, you but you'd probably want to replace that with a Compliance. condition that requires the lighting to be as per the details and um, to sort of, you know, it, 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 yeah. Through you, Chairman, uh, James Rogers has the power to read my mind now, so I just, uh, that's really good. I, and I know it's brilliant, actually. I don't have to say anything anymore. Um, yeah, on that note, I'd also propose it. I don't really have any other problems with it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Higgins. Councillor Duncan. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, in the description, it says it's to the west of the River Colne. It's to the east, isn't it? Yeah. And, and did I, uh, the question I was going to ask was about a grey water condition because we didn't seem to have one but I thought I heard you mention it when you were talking um, about different matters. So is that going to be included? It is. It's not on the addendum, that's all. That's why I'm just checking. Okay, I'm happy to second then. Thank you. Yeah, I think that was the, the verbal update, which <coughs> included grey water management as well, so that's, uh, that's included. And thank you, Councillor Duncan. Councillor Yarrow. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on page 162, there's quite a, a, a large dialogue on the fact that we believe that the overall parking quantum should be in the region of 47 spaces that would be required. Therefore, 31 spaces is showing quite a deficit. Um, what leads us to believe that as the existing is now 40, that 31 would in fact be okay? What leads us to believe that that's not going to cause a problem? Thank you, Councillor. I'm going to go straight to Alan to pick that one up, if you wouldn't mind, Alan. Um, the reason why we believe that uh, it can operate, firstly, the car parking standards are maximum numbers, so they can't be exceeded, but the area around the site is um, covered generally by uh, double yellow lines, 
There are some uh, unrestricted car parking, but those are allocated on a first, ser first come, first serve basis. So um, we use the expression self-enforcing. Um, people will know uh, not to drive if they haven't got somewhere to park on plot, mindful that the surrounding roads have all got double yellow lines. Okay, Councillor, are you okay with that? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Self-enforcing scheme. Yeah. There you go. There, there you go. Did you want to come back with anything, Alan or Mandy? Um, furthermore, the development will have a travel plan um, that we will take a £20,000 bond for to make sure that they uh, deliver. S similar to what we just talked about in the previous application. So, self-enforcing, yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Okay, no, thank you, everybody. Right, I'm not seeing anybody else indicate to speak, so we are moved and we are seconded, but just as a reminder, um, we've got an adjustment in the addendum to Condition 5. Um, we've now got a verbal um, addendum, well, not a verbal update from Mandip, which is going to now add uh, pollution-absorbing trees to the condition. We have an additional SUDS condition, which will be delegated to, to James and his team, which will include the grey water management, and we are going to be removing 2F, I believe, from one of the conditions, and enhancing the details around some of the lighting details, so that we, we have all that covered off. Um, so I think we're now in a position where we are uh, moved and seconded. We can take a vote. So all those in favour? That's unanimous, Steve. So agenda item 8 this evening is approved. Thank you very much. That thing brings us to the last item this evening, which uh, has been in front of this committee before, um, but there's a slight amendment to, to, uh, to this, which is agenda item nine, which is Terminal 4, Longstay Car Park, Southern Perimeter Road. Um, Mandip, I, I mean, we have a presentation for this, um, so I'm just wondering if members want to skip the presentation and just go to the debate. Any members particularly? No? Okay, so just a quick overview then, Mandip. Thank you. The, uh, the COVID testing centre is moving, well, has moved already. It's currently operational and it's located on the Terminal 4 car park. Again, this is a temporary permission, uh, which is actually due to expire very soon. Uh, but we are seeking to regularise um, and grant planning permission this evening for the temporary facility at Terminal 4. Councillor Higgins. I agree with Officer's recommendation on this. Okay. Councillor Duncan. I second. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cawthorne. I don't disagree with what Councillor Higgins has said. Uh, I, I, I'll just make the point, or, or at least ask the question, this ends in June 2022. Uh, we're looking at it rather late in the day. Can we just understand why that is? In this? Thank you. Yeah, I think it's to regularise something that's already happened, but I'll ask Mandy if she wants to put a bit more technical phraseology around that. I think that was perfectly technically correct. <laughs> It is, it is primarily that they had to move from the Bath Road. I think, the, I think we're on the third site. So as they need to re-provide the car parking for various staff as terminals are opening, they then need to move the facility in order to re regain the car parking. Now, Terminal 4, I don't believe, is opening at any point soon, hence the reason that the last location we, we're looking at will hopefully be where it stays until it ceases, hopefully very soon. Okay. Are you okay with that? Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Right, we are moved and we are seconded on this application. Can I have a show of hands, please? Steve, that's unanimous. So I can confirm agenda item nine this evening is approved. Right, that brings us to the end of the meeting. Thank you very much to members. Thank you very much to officers. Thank you very much to any members of the public that are here. And thank you to those that are watching on YouTube. But we'll draw the meeting to a close now and wish you a good evening. Thank you.